today we're going to review how to solve inequalities. Now for the most part, solving an inequality works the same way as solving an equation. There's just one special rule that makes them different and we'll look at that here in just a second. Let's start off with a basic inequality. Here we have 3 plus 6x is greater than 15. So just like in solving a normal equation, we want to get this x by itself. The first thing we're going to do is get rid of this plus 3. When we have something that's being added to move it or to get rid of it from that side, we're going to subtract that number from both sides. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the inequality. This leaves me with 6x is greater than 12. 6x means 6 times x. When we want to get rid of something that's being multiplied, we do the opposite. We're going to divide both sides by 6. This now leaves me with x is greater than 2. Okay, x is greater than 2. Now let's come look at this example over here. Again, we're going to start off the same way. We are going to subtract 6 from both sides of our inequality. When we do that, it leaves us with negative 2x is less than 10. So to get rid of that negative 2 that's being multiplied by x, we're going to come in and we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. Now, here is where solving an inequality differs from solving an equation. If we multiply or divide by a negative, we must reverse the direction of the inequality sign. So, negative 2 divided by negative 2, these cancel out, this leaves me with x. My less than sign is now going to become a greater than sign. Notice we flipped it. And then we have 10 divided by negative 2, which is negative 5. So here we get the final answer, x is greater than negative 5. Again, anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, we're going to reverse the direction of our inequality sign. Now for this next problem, Let's take a look and see about Paul and what he did solving the following inequality. So here Paul has solved this inequality. Now if you see a question like this and the steps are written out, they're going to want you to identify where Paul made a mistake. So there's somewhere along the way that Paul made an error in his work and we need to figure out where that error is. Well, one thing that you can do is you can actually solve the problem yourself. Okay, I could come over here work this problem out all on my own and see what answer I get to see where our steps are different. But let's take a look and let's see if we can figure it out. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to distribute, meaning take this number outside the parentheses and multiply it by everything on the inside. Let's come over here and let's do that ourselves. Negative 3 times x, negative 3x. Negative 3 times positive 4, negative 12, plus the 25. And then we're going to have a negative 3 on the other side. And we're going to add that with 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times negative 7, which is negative 14. And our inequality sign is going to still stay the same. We haven't done anything yet. Now, check to see that your step looks like theirs, and it does. The next step we want to do is we want to combine like terms. So we want to look on each side of the inequality and combine any terms that are similar. We know that negative 12 and positive 25 are like terms. So let's go ahead and we're going to add those together. So we have negative 3x, 13, and again is going to be greater than or equal to. We can combine the negative 3 and the negative 14 on the right-hand side, leaving us with 2x minus 17. So far, our work has matched Paul's work in both steps. So next we get to this step here. Well, to get there, Paul had to have moved all of his x's to the left-hand side. Okay, so we're going to, and then moved the numbers to the other. So he went ahead and got all the x's to the left and the numbers to the right. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So we subtract 13 from both sides. That leaves me with negative 3x is greater than or equal to 2x minus 30.
Now, he went ahead and moved the 2x to the side where the 3x is. So we subtracted 2x from both sides because the opposite of a positive 2x is subtracting our negative 2x. So now we have negative 5x is greater than or equal to negative 30. So at this point, we now need to get x by itself. Notice that this step here is the same as Paul got up here. So let's see what we're going to do. To get rid of a negative 5 in front of the variable, we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. And we remember from our last problem that if we divide both sides by a negative, we must reverse the direction of our inequality sign. So this is going to leave us with x is less than or equal to 6. Well, Paul got x is greater than or equal to 6. So there is his error. Okay, Paul forgot to change the direction of his inequality sign. Okay, now let's look at a little bit more complicated of a problem here. So here we're dealing with the formula for converting Fahrenheit and Celsius degrees. So let's take a look and let's see what it's asking us to do. So this is write and solve the inequality to determine the Fahrenheit temperature range at which this antifreeze protects the car. So in terms of Celsius, we say that we know there's between negative 30 and 115. So if I was to write that is an inequality, it would look like this. So we know that this temperature of the antifreeze has to be somewhere between these two values. But they're not wanting to know what it is for Celsius, they're wanting to know Fahrenheit. So what should we do? Well, we're gonna go in and wherever we see C, right, our Celsius in this formula, we can plug in our temperatures and solve for F, okay? So we know that C is the same thing as 5 ninths times F minus 32. So because these two are equal to each other, they're what we call interchangeable. We know that these are the same thing. So notice I took this formula, this inequality here, and where I saw Celsius, I now plugged in the formula for Celsius. So these two things mean the same thing. It's just a different way to write it. So in terms of Celsius, this is what our inequality might look like as well. So it can look like this using the formula, or it could just use, look like this using our terminology. Now, we need to figure out what our Fahrenheit degrees are. So let's take a look at how to calculate that. Okay, so for this time, we wanna actually figure out what the temperature is in Fahrenheit for our range we know it's 30 degree, negative 30 degrees Celsius. We know it's 115 degrees Celsius. But what is negative 30 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? Let's figure it out. So let's come over here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in negative 30 wherever we see C. Now we have a standard equation. We just need to solve for our F. So to solve for F, we have to get rid of this 5 ninths that's being multiplied by the F minus 32. To get rid of a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. Remember, the reciprocal means we flip it. So we're going to multiply both sides by 9 fifths. What's going to happen is these are going to simplify down to 1 or cancel each other out. Okay? And then we just have to do our math on the right side. So here we're going to do negative 30 times 9, and then we're going to divide it by 5. That gives us 54. Now we have 54 equals F minus 32. To get F by itself, we're going to add 32 to both sides, and that gives us a Fahrenheit temperature of 86 degrees. So negative 30 degrees Celsius is the same thing as 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's come to the other side. Let's do the same thing. We're going to plug in 115 for Celsius this time. Process is the same. We're going to multiply both sides by 9 fifths. Again, these simplify down to 1 or cancel each other out. We're going to do 115 times 9 divided by 5. And that's going to give us 207 equals F minus 32. To get F by itself, again, we're going to add 32 to both sides. And that gives us F is equal to 239. So now we know that our range is somewhere between 86 and 239. 
for our Fahrenheit value to protect the car's antifreeze would have to be between 86 and 239 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's just recap. There's two different ways that we can represent this value. Okay, we can show it in consent and to comparison of Celsius by either using the formula for Celsius, or even we could even write it this way. Okay, we know we can interchange these because they represent the same thing. They're equal to each other. And for Fahrenheit, we know that our value has to be somewhere between 86 degrees and 239 degrees. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to your instructor. Thank you.